Before history is written, it's played. Before it's frozen in time, it's fought one shift at a time. Before it's etched in silver, it's carved in ice. What happens next will last forever. The Stanley Cup Final on ABC and ESPN Plus begins Saturday. All right, welcome back to 755 Forever. I'm David O'Brien, Braves writer at The Athletic, with my co-host, Eric O'Flaherty, former Braves reliever. What's going on, Eric? Not much. How you doing, Dave? I'm all right, man. Let's start with the positive today from, from what was a rough four days in D.C. for the Braves, who lost another four-game series to the Nationals, which is, I just, I'm, I'm astounded that they lost six games. I know the Nationals are a lot better than they were a year ago, but they lost six games six out of eight games to them in span of two weeks, home and away series, which uh, is just kind of the state of where the Braves are right now. But the positive today, besides the first three innings by uh, Hurston Waldrop, which I thought were really impressive. First time through the order, he was really good. But Jesse Chavez got his 1,000th strikeout today. Coach. That's nuts. That is coach nuts. got his thousandth strikeout. If you would have told, if somebody told you with Jesse when you knew him back in 2010 or whatever, that he's going to still be pitching, that he's going to have a thousand strikeouts someday, you would have said, well, Yeah, he's like the last guy on his team. I think that I would have not thought that. I mean, he, but that's and that's the beauty of baseball is things can click, you can find your identity kind of late, and it's it's beautiful for him because. He didn't have an easy journey. I think he got up to the big leagues kind of quick, but it was a lot of up and down. It was a lot of the, uh, you know, kind of long man, burn you out, send you down type of stuff. And he earned every one of those because, I mean, he, he even pitched so well that Oakland let him start for a while. So that probably helped him pad those numbers and get there. He didn't get there strictly as a reliever, but. Uh, he was good as a starter for them too. For one year, oh, he was yeah. really good. Yeah, he was, he locked in. I mean, I always tell a story of, there was a time when early in spring training, so you have a bunch of minor leaguers coming up and uh, the the non-roster invite guys. And in Oakland, the PFP field was like a direct line behind the pitchers throwing their bullpens. So you could see the pitches that Jesse was throwing. And you got a lot of time to stand around because you're in a line, you do your rep, you throw to the base, and then you get to the back of it. And everybody kind of looks over and Jesse's throwing a bullpen. The glove doesn't move for like, 15 out of 16 pitches that we watched and these guys were just blown away and I was like that's what he does and you know with his stuff he had better stuff and it's he's gotten old I mean he's he's 40 something the first time I saw him throw he was 96 97 and it was easy and he was probably 50 pounds lighter than he is now I mean he was like a buck 45 and so he went from that and then he found himself and he found himself in Oakland he learned a cutter, he, and he could put his cutter on both sides of the plate. And now if you watch him pitch today, that glove does not move much. So anyways, these these minor leaguers were just blown away that anybody has that much control. And I think that's kind of, you know, in today's game to do what he's doing with the stuff he still has left is it's really impressive to me because you can just you just can't miss the glove. There's only a, a, a few pitchers even like him at all in the major leagues anymore. No. And none in prominent relief roles. I mean, he's... He's a throwback. He's a different uh, – he's reinvented himself several times over yep. the course of his career after injuries and with diminished stuff. Uh, he's used guile and just heart. smarts over so the years. So much heart. Heart, guts, yeah. And uh, and being a terrific teammate. Yep. Because if he was an asshole, he would have got released. He would not – people wouldn't have keep bringing him back. I mean, he was good, <laughs> yeah. but he hasn't been good for very many teams except the Braves in the last yep. five, six years been great for the Braves, but he's been such a great teammate that people kept giving him chances because you ask about him and most teams have had a guy that played with him at some point and they're going to say, oh yeah, he's terrific, man. You got to get him. Yeah. Yeah. He's real cerebral and and he, you know, he's creative. So he might say something in a way to a young guy that makes more sense than what you always hear. But yeah, I was just, uh, that would have been the last guy on the 2010 Braves team I thought would still be pitching. 
out of out of everybody we had because he was having to earn it and i said heart because it beats you up being in that long man role it, there, it's thankless and a lot of times you get your innings and you're going down even if you pitch well so to be able to stick that out and and just keep grinding like that and not get broken by the the ups and downs of that role and, and find himself where he is today is pretty cool and to be a he was a hard partier in his younger years too and uh and he's t- he's throttled that back and I don't uh, I don't know if he's not alive. now. <laughs> I haven't seen not him like in a he while, was. but not like he was. <laughs> yeah. He could put him down. <laughs> That's but, probably, so, I mean, just as impressive as anything. So he went in the end in a two thirds today, scoreless with three strikeouts and uh what, two walks, which is a lot for him. But uh hitless. Whittled his ERA to one three seven. I mean, it is crazy how he keeps coming back to the Braves and putting up these numbers and then either starting spring training with another team or gets traded to another team, but it does nothing for other teams. It comes back here and everything clicks. He's comfortable with these guys, with the coaches, with the manager, with the surroundings, the way they use it, everything, teammates. But I mean, here he is 40 years old. He's got a one three seven ERA right now in 20 appearances for the Braves. I'll tell you what's a good combo is Snit managing him because there's something about the confidence boost you get when a manager throws you into a big situation and Snit has the balls to do it. I think he goes to a lot of teams and they see his stuff. Maybe you get a game or two and and blow one. They're going to stay away from the guy throwing 91 and and placing it and go with the sure thing of the 99 power arm. But Snit has the balls to throw him in the eighth inning of a tie game and it's just something about that. It, it just boosts your confidence that they believe in you that you can do it. And then you get one of those, you know, one or two of those under your belt, and all of a sudden you're rolling and your confidence is is high. But I think more than anything, his success with the Braves just speaks to comfort and confidence and how important it is in baseball. And this is a guy that last year, remember, he was uh he was a K, he was being seriously mentioned as a candidate for the All-Star team with his sub one ERA before he yep. got hit with the line drive that broke his leg, came back at the end of the year. Wasn't the same after missing that much time, but he had a one five six ERA in thirty six appearances for the Braves last year. In between, he goes to the White Sox spring training. Can't even make their opening day roster. Gets released by the White Sox. You don't think they could use him right now with the way he's pitching for the Braves? But I don't think he's over. pitching like that there either. Yeah, in the spring he obviously wasn't. But no, uh, the year before that he has a two seven two ERA in forty six appearances for the Braves. After starting that season with the Cubs and having a 6-3-5 ERA in three appearances, getting traded to the Angels by the Braves just so they could pick up a piece for the stretch drive, only spent a month with the Angels, had a 7-5-9 ERA in 11 appearances with them, comes back to the Braves and keeps pitching great for the Braves. The, so just year after year after year, it's insane, man. But it's, it's awesome, and I hope he can keep doing it as long as he wants to do it. And it's I'm good- sure – it happens too, where like you just happen to love the mounds in a certain division. He must yeah. love that truest park mound. You know, maybe he loves Philly. So you get to be on these fields that you've had success with on a lot and, and kind right. of keep repeating that. That that helped me a lot too. I love pitching in the NL East. He said he also liked, uh, he didn't get used to being in Arizona for spring training, the drier weather. He couldn't grip the ball as well with the stuff he throws. That's important to him. So the Atlanta humidity and all that does he does like it he loves pitching here but i'm sure the day he retires and asks he's retired he's going to get a, a couple of offers to coach somewhere including probably with the braves at some level in their organization yeah yeah i would think so he's too much that guy's too much got too much going for him to share with others to not have him around your young players i mean he's well and those are the guys usually that learn the most you know i mean the that's kind of a thing that people say in baseball that the best players don't always make the best coaches. Right. And I'm going through it when things are simple for you. For me, I'm trying to teach little kids right now and I got nothing for them because I have no practice instructing and coaching right. and stuff that's just second nature for me. Right. You know, they, they're right. not even close to being able to repeat anything. So it's like, right. <laughs> I, I seriously have nothing to offer these six, seven, eight, nine year olds. And I know what they're doing wrong, but I don't have, you know, the, right. the experience to, communicate it to them and kind of crack their code and they say it's kind of similar with some of the best coaches are guys that sucked you know that right they, i mean they're still pro pro ball players but they they topped out in double a and they know the pain and the grind and the struggle and trying to figure it out yep. trying to crack the code and and that versus if you have a guy that's a 
you know, 320 hitter his whole career and hit 400 home runs. It's like maybe he was really smart, and a lot of times they are, but there's also guys that it just came so natural they don't have yeah. to think about it. But a yeah, guy like Chipper. Jesse that's figured out how this league at 91, you don't want yeah. him talking to your guy that throws 97. You know, like there's exactly. there's so much that he can teach people. Yeah, and a personality, bilingual. I mean, it's just everything yep. is uh, there for him to be a – and he wants to do it. Yep. He's already said he wants to coach when he when he's done. He wants to coach. So he's a lifer. Coach wants to coach. <laughs> he's a lifer. Yeah, he is. From grown worthy dad jokes to patching up skin knees, your dad is one of a kind. This Father's Day, give him a gift that is guaranteed to take him to his happy place. Omaha Steaks. Order mouth watering gift packages starting at just eighty nine dollars when you go to omahasteaks.com and use promo code FOREVER at checkout. Each package is backed by their unconditional money-back guarantee. Show your dad the love he deserves with a gift as unforgettable as he is. Visit omahasteaks.com, promo code FOREVER at checkout. Braves are still waiting to get Mentor back. His 15 days isn't up, but it's up soon, and he's doing well. So it looks like that hip is healing. So they want to get him an inning and then, then have him ready. Maybe maybe just a uh, either an inning at Triple A or a sim inning, but he's he's going to be back soon. This injury report is brought to you by Gerber and Holder, attorneys who only represent injured workers. Sponsoring this injury report, just like these Braves, if you've been hurt on the job, go to www.gerberholderlaw.com. That's G E R B E R H O L D E R Law.com. And we appreciate the uh, them sponsoring our injury report. The injury report is, is pretty thin right now. But unfortunately, the Braves are not making the most of getting these guys back. That was brutal, man. They had uh, they had a terrific, another great start from uh, Max. They Schwellenbach got knocked around. His second one was not nearly as good as his first one. And the connecting thread to all of this really is the offense. I mean, they'll have one game where you think, okay, they're getting it back. They scored a, like today, they scored a run in the first inning. They look like they might do like last year. And then it just peters out and they don't take advantage of a lot of opportunities. And they were going against a kid today who's been, it was his second major league start and he was all over the place. And I thought when he almost hit Kellenick, he threw him inside. Then the next pitch almost hit Kellenick in the face, and Kellenick bitched at him, yelled that back, "What are you doing, man?" <laughs> and then, then and then the, nervous, kid's next, yeah. the kid's next pitch was a ninety-four fastball that he bounced ten feet in front of the plate and to the right, overthrow and trying to correct it. So I thought, okay, this guy's on the ropes; they're going to knock him out now, and they didn't. You know, those are the kind of guys that they they just blew up last year, and they're not doing it, and they're also not hitting very, good pitchers very well, but. Matt Olson's hit a lot better recently, but he struck out three times today. So it's still kind of one step forward, two steps back with some guys or with the team in general. But they've just been able to put nothing together with any consistency. I was looking at it today. They had eight star. They had eight All Stars last year. Two of them pitchers, six position players. Every one of the eight is either hurt or has struggled mightily this year. Yeah, the two pitchers were Spencer, Spencer Strider, and and our guy that's at triple a right now, Bryce elder, who's got a six ERA and five starts this year in the big leagues. I think the six position players was the entire infield plus Acuna plus. Oh, plus Murphy. So you got Murphy missed two months. Acuna's out for the season. He struggled before he got hurt. Murphy has struggled like crazy since he got back. He hit the bomb last night. So maybe that'll help him get going. That was the first real ball he's hit with authority since he got back. He crushed it. Then he was off today, and they're off tomorrow before they play Tuesday at Baltimore. So maybe that'll get him going. We'll see. But he's done nothing in the 10 games since he got back except until that home run. Arcia, taking a step back this year, had the best year of his career last year. And he's doing really nothing this year. He can't get going any, anything going. Austin Riley, I keep thinking he's hitting the ball hard. He's going to get results. Now he's not really hitting that many balls hard right now. So I don't know, man. I. It's just not a good sense of things about to change with this team. I, I think we're both confident they will. Yeah. But it's taking a lot longer than I expected. Yeah, I'm getting tired of being reassuring. You know, like, it's just how the game is, though. For me, it just speaks to how important momentum is and, and confidence, like I said. But if the offense is rolling, then there's less pressure on the bottom. And 
all these guys had either career years or some of the best years of their career last year. And when that's happening up and down your lineup, there's this effect on the other pitcher. They're beat up by the time they get to seven, eight, nine. And then when seven, eight, nine are hot, they got to start all over and they got runners on for the top. Like lineups just when they get hot and they flow like that. I mean, they were able to carry that momentum the entire season last year. There wasn't ever, I don't remember a time where we were questioning like what's wrong with the offense. It was a game or two and then eight spot and then another bad game and then score 12 in three games. Yep. Yep. They didn't have any stretch even close to what they're going through yep. now. You don't win 104 games having a stretch like this. No. They, uh, they're they 9 and 15 in their last 24. They've scored three or fewer in 14 of those games and would have had it again today if Kellenick doesn't hit a three run homer in the ninth inning. Yep. They were down 8 2. He hits a three run homer. He hits it off Jordan Weems, and I have no idea why Davey brought in Jordan Weems to start that ninth because the Braves had had uh, Harris, Kilnick, switch hit Nazia, and then Arcia. But they had two lefties and a switch hitter coming up, and Weems is terrible this year against lefties. Lefties are hitting 400 OPS and 1,000 against him. Sure enough, Harris gets a single, and uh, then he walks Arcia, who got two walks today, after having two walks like the last 20 some games, Arceus have not walking all. He walked twice today. And then Kelnick has three run homer off. But Weems has been terrible against lefties. I think they were just so comfortable with the lead. Probably yeah. wanted to give Weems some work today because they're, you know, probably due to get some work. But you're not going to get better against them if you don't face them. And you got a, what was it, a five run lead? Yeah. Or six run lead. Six run lead. So that's the time where yeah. go get your work in and closer so. gets a save if you don't. So they brought Finnegan in and boom, 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 fly out, yep. fly out, routine fly out with uh, Ozuna and uh, Riley. And then he strikes out Olsen, third strikeout for Olsen today. Uh, he's been better lately, but still got a lot of strikeouts, like 33 in his last 28 games, I think it is. But this stretch, they're hitting, in that stretch I just said the night, they're hitting like 219 in there with less than a homer a game. Again, they're on this pace. They're just that's what they've been on all year. Basically, less than a homer a game, right under after hitting 307 homers last year. So almost two a game last year. With basically the same guys. I mean, you know, Acuna's out now, but he only had four before he got hurt. But it's just a with, team wide malaise, man, offensively, yeah. with the notable exception of Ozuna. Yeah, he hasn't cooled off. But no, I mean not I at could, all. I could say with confidence, even if they were you know, pitching twice as good, it it would not be as fun to watch as the last couple seasons. I mean, it just shows you how blessed everybody was that was involved with this team for these few years of offense that was just ridiculous. I mean, those games are so fun to watch where it's, I mean, it's tough. It's tough to watch a team where you get down three, nothing in the second and you're like, fuck, we might be out of this thing. It's, it's so much more fun. I mean, I was, I watched a lot more of the entire games last year, waiting for the team to come back and, Wondering how they were going to do it, but almost knowing they were going to do it when they can come back six nothing felt like pff, they'll find a way. And this year's been the opposite. It's it's not as fun to watch. And they're having great pitching, like three out of yeah. five days, three out of, yeah. three out of six days. But it's you're right though. It's so much more enjoyable watching a team that's Mashes. hitting like crazy, yeah. never out of it, and getting mediocre pitching than it is to watch yeah. a team getting great pitching. But if they score five runs, it's a big day. Yeah, those teams are tough to watch, man. Yeah, and that's that's how Seattle out here is. I mean, they they have an incredible pitching staff, but they haven't really scored, and their games haven't been like Braves. I've been watching more because they're doing better, but their their games are not like those Braves games we've been watching the last few years. Where I mean, something electric happens every night. They're they're fighting to score runs every night, and they're winning, and it's still not that fun. Yeah, so so Olsen leads the majors last year with fifty four and one hundred and thirty nine RBIs, hit two eighty three nine ninety three OPS. He's hitting 239 with nine homers, 34 RBIs, and a 750 OPS. Even though 834 in the last 30 days. Riley, he's the big one, man. Because he's missed your consistency over the previous three years, even though he would get hot streaks. Little slumps, yeah. At the end of the year, he had the same great numbers every year. So he's hitting 230 with three homers, 20 RBIs, 648 OPS in 50 games. Over the last three seasons before this one, he hit 286, 878 OPS, averaged 36 homers and 99 RBIs. And we're getting kind of deep to to catch up to those. We're 63. We got 99 left. Yeah. Albies has hit 
Uh, he's hitting 265, four homers, 725 OPS, 55 games. He hit 280 with 33 homers at 849 OPS last year and 148. Murphy, he's hit 147, one homer, 481 OPS. Granted, only 10 games, but he hit 306 with 17 homers and a 999 OPS before the All Star break last year. Wow. 17 homers and a 990 OP, 999 OPS in 67 games before the break. He fell off like sub 600 in the second half, but his numbers were still great because his first half was so incredible. Yeah, and that's kind of what you got to hope for is that, you know, yeah. you were talking about this terrible second half, but they were so second good, half, or it. terrible first half, and they were so great in the right. second half that you forget about this. Arcia followed his career best season with a dud so far. He's hit 230. 635 OPS in 63 games. His past 23, he's hit 195 with 24 strikeouts, four walks. Two of those were today. I mean, he's really fall off this year. So that's where the six position player all, all stars. And I mentioned that the, the two pitchers. So it's crazy. Ozuna didn't make the all star team, remember, last year because of that mm-hmm. April. He played well yeah. enough in May and June to make it, but by then he was already so far yeah. behind, you know. So he didn't make it. Right now, He's the only position player on this team that deserves to make it or will. I, I don't think anybody – Acuna might have been voted in just because of name. Yeah. But I don't think any of their other names are going to get voted in with the numbers they have. I think Ozuna will make it, obviously. He'll get yeah. named to it if he's not voted. Or they don't vote uh, – D- do they vote DH? I forget. But Sale and Lopez have both pitched well enough, and I think Freed is getting his numbers there too where he's pitched well enough. Yeah, so and he's had some pitchers. standout games. You know, those high strikeout right. games will get you noticed. Right. So free with a name and great since after the first two starts. But really, it's Ozuna and three pitchers, and that's it. And and probably two, maybe two of those pitchers, if they, not all three of them are going to make it from the same rotation, I don't think, but with a team record being what it is. But Ozuna will. But it's going to be from eight all-stars last year to maybe two or three this year. Yeah. I've been thinking, you know, watching some of the games, there's been a lot of balls to the track, though. I, I I can't get over it, but and I know they tweak the balls a lot, but it seems like the balls are not flying the same this year. It doesn't. And the weird thing is that's affecting the Braves more so. I mean, it's not weird in that the Braves are built for slugging and home runs. Yeah. So you would you would think it would affect them more than it affects a team with a more balanced offense. But yep. my thing is some of these games where the Braves are hitting balls to the track, like Olsen, the guys on the other teams are hitting them into the stands. And that's what's weird, you know? Even though the Braves are getting – sometimes, like uh, C.J. Nikowski pointed something out the other day, the Braves exit v low, their balls hit above like 95 or 8 miles an hour are going 15 feet shorter this year yeah. than last year, whereas mo- other teams are going like 8 feet shorter. It's really weird, man. There's weird shit happening with this team. Yeah. Bad yeah. luck and v- some bad mojo, man. I don't know. Well, I think like a guy like Arcia would be the guy that I would think would get affected the most by it. Or even Olsen, who has that ability to flip the ball out the other way. Right. When he when he goes the other way for a homer, you know, it's not 20 rows deep. It, right. it's, it's five, but he has that ability to stay through it. And that, that goal with your swing of staying inside it and driving it to left yeah. center, you get away from that a little bit when you fly out to the track a few times. Maybe you swing harder. Yeah. Maybe you want to pull the ball a little bit more. Arcia, he doesn't hit yeah. balls 30 rows deep. He so hits fence scrapers. You're right. Arcia does. If, so maybe he has five more or four more or something like that. You know, and, and that affects your confidence and it affects your approach. I mean, I think I talked about it on a previous episode, but if you look at like Adrian Beltre's career, when he yeah. went to Safeco yeah. and the ball started dying, I mean, his, his whole approach kind of got out of whack. And then he gets out of there, he goes to Fenway, short porch and left. You miss a ball, it's still a double because that fence is tall and and so short. Yeah, he turns his, I mean, turns into a hall of famer. No, goes right back to being a hall of famer. But that when the ball's not flying, it just really affects your confidence and and your ability to trust that I can swing easy and hit it out the other way. And so many players say how important it is to drive the ball the other way, and that that keeps their direction and swing locked in. Riley's one of them. He's all yeah. about hitting it the other way, hitting it to right center. So they started out this season, and it was like they were just picking up where they left off last yeah. last year. Those first three weeks, they were doing the same thing. First month, even they hit two eighty three, slugged four sixty seven, averaged six runs a game in their eighteen and six start. They had the best record in the majors. Since then, they've hit two nineteen, averaged three point five runs, and have lost twenty one of thirty eight games. So, 
I started out doing it the same. And by the way, slugging across baseball is down this year, like 20 points, 15 to 20 points. So it's down quite a bit, like where the Braves slugged 501 last year, first team in history to slug 500 or better for a full season. This year, the leader is like 456, 460. So it's down, and nobody's doing what the Braves were doing last year. But the Braves are down over 100 points off last year. Yeah, and the, the crazy thing is last year didn't seem unmaintainable. You know what I mean? When you were watching it, you weren't like, these, no, these guys aren't that good. They, they can't keep this up. But I guess maybe if you're setting a record for team slugging percentage over a whole season, it's it's a pretty rare year. So I think they fall somewhere in the middle. You know, I think that they're definitely not as bad as they've been, but you might not right, get another right. year like this out of them, like last year. Yeah, I mean, and we were saying at the time, it wasn't like anybody on the team was having, well, Olsen's home runs and RBIs became kind of crazy, and so did Acuna's. But most yeah. of the guys like Riley. You've seen him do it. Were having the same years they had. And on Ozzy was having just a top of his type of year, but it wasn't a crazy yeah. year yeah. For, for him. It was only Acuna and Olsen really put up insane numbers. Yeah, if Arcia would have hit 45 out of nowhere or – you know, Ozuna hit 391. You know, like these things that, that don't... Yeah. Take the same by the end of the year? Yeah. It, nobody know. was doing something you didn't think they could repeat. Maybe not 4070, I guess. <laughs> That's tough. Oh, man. When we were talking about, though, he might... He, he, that he, hadn't, he still hasn't peaked out yet. Whether you're a world-class athlete or a podcaster, we all understand the importance of mental and physical well-being in proper recovery for top-notch performance. That's why I'm excited that Unified Healing is sponsoring this episode of 755 Forever. Unified Healing is a new and super innovative global network of wellness centers powered by Energy Enhancement System, or EE System. If you haven't heard of the EE System yet, you'll want to listen up. This technology promotes wellness, deep relaxation, purification, and rejuvenation. Interested in experiencing the EE system technology for yourself? Go to unifiedhealing.com slash forever to learn more and find a center near you. That's U-N-I-F-Y-D healing.com slash forever. No material or testimonials on the Unified Healing website are intended to be viewed as medical advice or a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health care provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before undertaking a new health care regimen, including EE system. The Orioles are slugging 452. They're leading the majors. The next is Yankees at 438. And they're like, you know, these, I mean, the Yankees are a big time slugging team this year. And that's, that's, 63 points below what the Braves did last year. 63. Yeah, and they got a squad in a small park. I mean, that just right there emphasizes right, how- A ridiculous park, yeah. Yeah. So you can tell that it's down. Slugging is down. Home runs are down. But uh, it doesn't explain everything the Braves are doing because they're down relatively. The Braves are, Braves are ninth in the majors in slugging. Just ahead of the Guardians who have no home run hitters. The Braves are slugging 401. They slugged 501 last year. <laughs> 100 points, man. Yeah, but, I, mean, uh, I just I keep checking the box score, waiting, and it's like shit. Am I checking yesterday's game? No way they did that. You know they didn't score again, and yeah, it's yeah, yeah. I don't have an answer for it. Uh, the the one thing that's that stayed strong and keep getting better is those the three guys in that rotation, the top three guys, yeah. man. Like Sale had a bad outing, and he comes back with two good ones. You know, Freed has been fantastic. Lopez has been the most consistent guy in a rotation. Uh, that rotation right now, well, it's 13th with a 389, but so much of that is the fourth and fifth guys, you know. If you could do a top three rotation, <laughs> Brace would be up there with the Phillies and the Mariners. But you can't do that. So yeah, Brace got to figure I out. Waldrop showed, I mean – I know he gave it up, but I thought he looked pretty good, his stuff. I did too. I That split is everything. Yeah. The hype. It's not hype. It's real. I mean, I, that's – that. I thought uh, CJ had a great stat too showed on the broadcast today. His split 
they they put the lowest spin rate of of all the the guys who've thrown a certain number of splitters in the majors this year. Lowest spin rate. His spin rate is lower than the lowest splitter spin rate in the majors, which is great for a splitter because the movement he's going to get, yep. it's almost like knuckleballish, what it can do to drop. He threw a couple of them that were totally unhittable. I mean, but a second time through the order was a different thing like it is with a lot of these young guys because they had a better feel for him. Yeah, They spat on some pitches. And that fastball is going to have to locate it better. It's a really good fastball, but he can't miss with it right over the plate. Yeah, and this is what we were talking about before he got called up of like this is the level he needs to be at to get made pay. To, to, because the first yeah. time a AAA lineup sees that split, it's the only thing they're talking about, and they're probably coming out of their approach. Yeah. The major yeah. league lineup, it doesn't matter really what they're looking for. They they get a heater middle. They know how to hit it. They do damage. And you just you don't get away with the same mistakes in the majors. And they get ahead and account. It's like I'm I'm, I'm not going to swing at that, you know. I, 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 I've seen it now. I got a better idea what it is. It comes out of his hand, real similar tunneling like the fastball. That's the key to it. But still, the big league hitters, it's just different, man. He had struck out eleven and walk one in his last in his only Triple A start this year, and he's facing a Nats team, which while is a lot better than it was, is still not one of the better hitting teams in baseball. Yeah, and they hit some good pitches, and but they not hit some a lot bad of pitches. Not a lot of guys get sent down from Triple A and go hit in the eight and nine hole. You know, so right. those are your middle of the order hitters, and so you're basically facing a Triple A All Star right. team. So that's why it's there's not those easy outs, and there's not those only few hitters you got to focus at. That level jumps tough, and that was a big thing for me. Was like, you know, I could just get free sliders for strikes. I could hitters wouldn't sit on pitches really in the minors, and they didn't have as as strong and and steady of an, an approach against you. It was kind of more like just randomness right so if you make yeah. good pitches you got outs and then you get up to the big leagues and a guy sees you throw a bunch of sliders to the hitter in front of him he just goes up and sits on it you fall behind the counter yeah. you get ahead he's like i'm still looking for that so they they have that that's what gets them out of triple a that ability to make you pay on bad pitches if you make great pitches they play anywhere from rookie ball all the way to the majors but in the big leagues is where your bad ones get hit so he ends up he ends up today with a line that was three and two thirds Keep in mind, he faced the minimum through three. Yeah. <laughs> he gave up a hit and an error. Got erased those with a double play and a pickoff. I love how fast he is to the plate, too. It's kind of the opposite of Kerr. Mm -hmm. He gives the catcher a good chance to because that throw out that pick caught stealing was easy. Wasn't even close. He's really quick to the plate. I love his rhythm. Yep. I love his demeanor. He looks like he belongs out there. He didn't look lost deer lost in the headlights. None of that. He looked He's put together, you know. He's got. A, he's he's not a kid, and stuff. He topped out at ninety eight, and that's with ninety eight and that split, and then a decent couple of other pitches. I think he could put it together real soon. I and I hope they keep him up. I hope I'm, give him another chance. They're giving Schwellenbach another start after his last one was pretty bad. He's gonna make another one Wednesday at Baltimore. No easy task. There'll be his third start, but I like both of these guys. They look a lot more ready than say AJ did last year. I just think both of them look a lot ready, especially especially uh Hurston. Yeah, and I th I think you're doing players especially starters, I think you're doing them a misservice just uh, disservice by calling them up and sending them down. Yeah. Because after one start getting knocked their dick knocked off and they go down no Yeah. Th then when you get called back up, you start right where you you start over again. But if you can have that one and then roll the good one out there, and then maybe the next one's okay. You kind of get your momentum going and, and figuring out the the league. And, you know, maybe it was just an off day for you, and that's that's gets to be the only impression you make. You know, I think if a guy's that important, you give him at least two or three. And if they're all bad, then we know what you got to work on now. Yeah, so I thought Waldrop, this line is no not indicative of all of how he pitched today because he goes three and two-thirds, four hits, seven runs, four walks, one strike on a home run. Three of the runs scored because he leaves with the bases loaded. Bummer comes in and gives up a bases clearing double. And I know Bummer's beating himself up right now. He takes that shit hard and he's had some bad. He's had a few of those where he's given up runs, inherited runs. And those experienced guys that have been around a long time, you guys hate that shit, don't you? I mean, that's the hardest oh, thing, so, it, giving up inherited runs. That's what you pride yourself the most on as a reliever. Like that, there were some years where 
you know, I had a good year, but the thing I wanted people to talk about was one of 26 inherited runners or some number like that. That's the thing you're the most proud of. And you're especially amongst relievers. Like we had a year where Moilo cashed my runs in every time he came in for me and he couldn't have felt worse, but there's nothing. I mean, it just, it just worked out that way. He's not doing it on purpose. And I had to just tell him it's okay. And then I'd come in for him and, and save his ass every time. So it, it flip-flopped the next year, but sometimes that's just the way it goes. But it's tough because you're probably a little sleepy down there when the starters face the minimum through three. You know, you, you probably yeah. got ready in a hurry, like when it falls apart that quick. And it was quick. You get ready quick. You're kind of rattled, and, and you don't have time to have that calm warm-up and, and know when you're pitching. Those, those quick rush jobs sometimes, I mean – yeah, you never inning. really get there. Yeah. And you not got your feet up. A lot in fourth inning. No, and not he definitely didn't pitch a lot in the fourth inning when the starter was at however many pitches and, and right. rolling. You're yeah, just not expecting cruising. to come in. He was cruising. I'm like, this kid keeps this up. He might go seven innings today. And that's why those last few spots in the bullpen are the toughest ones. Because a game like that happens, the closer still got his feet up. <laughs> he knows when he's pitching. But you could have that game where you just have to stand up and start throwing your arms around and, and jogging a little bit, throwing as hard as you can, as fast as you can. You still got to get ready in probably less than five minutes and you're in the game. Two minutes later, you're talking about what – two minutes ago, you're talking about what you're going to eat tonight. Yeah. You know, you're not even locking in and starting your routine yet. Five minutes after that, you're in the game. Those yeah, are the tough and I, ones. And yeah, they got to take a bus over to Baltimore and have an off day. Right now, they don't, probably don't want another off day. Second off day on this trip. Weird trip. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you you look at that kid, and the kid leaves the game with – it's already bad enough with four runs, and then there's all of a sudden seven on his first start of his career. So, anyway, it was a rough day. And we talk about how bad it is, and I know the, the fans are really just so frustrated, and they put they, – they, they live and die with this team, you know. They, they've gotten so spoiled. All of us have watching this team the last few years, but the fans, you know, they – some of them invest so much in a team, you know. Mm-hmm. And how well the team does. It's such a big part of their life. I mean, it's like for a lot of them, it's the only team they really care about once they get out of college and all that. So it's tough for them. And they all want to know what's the answers, what's wrong, what can this team do? And I'm like, hey, if anybody had the answers, much less some reporter, you know, we wouldn't be doing this. But when that, when their manager and the hitting coach, who are very accomplished themselves, can't supply an answer. And the players, all-stars, yeah. some of them can't supply answers. It's baseball. It happens. I mean, I know you don't want to hear that, but there are no answers to give you. There are no pat answers. If there were, they would have already fixed it. Yeah, I promise think, they're not not working. And I think when it does, as long as it's, this is lasting, and it's lasted a long time, you could go to Baltimore and have three great games and win 10-2 to two and 8-1 to one and, you know, sweep the Orioles. And all of a sudden, it's like, now we're rolling, you know? Yeah, well, that's why like it's that. so tough because you have to maintain that attitude and believe that, and the game will test you and tell you it's never coming back, buddy. <laughs> you yeah. know, like the and the ones that the ones that get sucked into that and and can't stay level and and get through this phase. Those are the guys that don't play very long, and the guys that can handle this. I mean, you eventually get out of it if you keep working hard and have a good attitude and. You're open-minded on what you might be doing wrong. You're not stuck in your ways. Those are the guys that fight and get out of it and turn it around. And I think it's the same with teams. You know, if you have good leadership that's not panicking, and I don't think Snit's panicking, but, you know, bullpens are the toughest. When you have a manager that every time you pitch bad, you go to the back of the line, That's that amplifies the pressure by a million. Because every time you pitch, you're like, shit, I'm never going to see the eighth inning again <laughs> if I give it up right yeah. now. Instead right. of focused on competing, you're you're trying to prove yourself. And it's it, that's just how the game is. You just have to stay level. And I think the fans are getting a taste of how hard that is <laughs> right now. Yeah, I know I, he hasn't snapped yet. He hasn't gotten short in these post games. But I know he's tired of answering the same questions because we're tired of asking him. But yeah, he's not sleeping the same. I'm guessing as normal. Oh, I bet not. And I know I know Seitzer's not. I know he ain't. Sleeping. He is not. Yeah, I mean, last year we were like, "Where's his extension at?" Yeah, exactly. Now, you know, and he's probably thinking the same thing. Now you're like, shit, if they now don't turn this around, him, I might be, you know, looking for a job next year. Right. I mean, it's crazy, man. The, the, the fandom is what it is. And I understand people are fanatics. That's why they're fans, the passion and all that. But uh, everybody was saying, everybody, extend Alex, keep him here for life. 
now there are some saying Alex has got to go. Alex got to be asked about this roster construction. I'm like, what do you want us to ask him about it? Yeah, we the thought they were World Series favorites year. at spring training. Yeah, exactly. What do you want him to ask us about? Why don't you have some guys that can bunt? What, what are you going to ask him? Why aren't the guys that did so well last year doing well this year? You Why didn't you Snit? see it coming? Didn't Why don't you, know? you yell, yeah. Snit? Why don't you yell at them so they'll start hitting like they did last year? Yeah. All right. Well, three games in Baltimore. I'm flying up there on Tuesday. Uh, I'm looking forward to being at Cam to win. Been Cam to Yards in a long time. And uh, it don't get any easier for the Braves. You go from five, six games, which I thought they could win, you know, four out of them, at least with Boston and D.C. to facing the Orioles at home. It's a tough draw. So we'll see. See what they do. See how they come back from the second off day on a one-road trip. <laughs> I know yeah. they're not going to be happy to walk it around tomorrow. <laughs> You get to see that weird left field uh, project they did, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah It would be a lot nicer for the Braves if they left that fence where it was. Thanks, everybody. We appreciate it. 755 Forever. We are out. This is the story of the one. As a maintenance engineer, he hears things differently. To the untrained ear, everything on his shop floor might sound fine, but he can hear gears grinding or a belt slipping. So he steps in to fix the problem at hand before it gets out of hand. And he knows granger has got the right product he needs to get the job done, which is music to his ears. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done.